Hey team, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a post from r slash engineering students titled, Who is getting all the interviews? Oh, also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So thanks if you do that. I don't get it. I'm a good student. I have a 3.8 GPA at the best school in my state and one of the best public schools in the country. I am on a design team. I am in research. I have previous internship experience. I am a junior. I fill out a custom cover letter for each application. My resume is good. It has been reviewed countless times by myself and others. Why am I getting rejection after rejection? Is it because I'm not a leader on my design team? What else do they want from me? Surely leadership would be a benefit for the more competitive companies like major automakers, aerospace, and defense. But random ass companies, engineering firms, why can't I even get an interview? <laughs> this is like a direct parallel to the nice guy in dating. You know, that guy that's like, I'm a nice guy. I have all these great things about me. Why don't any of these girls want me? I mean, who could possibly be better out there, huh? I'm the best they can get. Why don't they want this? <laughs> so first off, I feel like a little humility would go a long way. I'm sure the way you wrote this probably transfers over in your resume and probably your interviews. So that's just like, I think a, a good first disclaimer to make, but given that maybe you are very frustrated and you wrote this in the heat of the moment, let's treat this as if you are as good as you say you are. Again, I guess this goes into the humility piece. What makes you think you're so great? I don't think there's any better way to say that. I'm sorry. But we could go through all these things and you would quickly realize this is everyone. You are everyone. I'm a good student. Okay, everyone can say that. I have a 3.8 GPA. Yeah, it's on the higher side. You're in a great school. Okay. I'm on a design team. Awesome. You're in research. Yeah. You have previous internship experience. Don't we all? I'm a junior. Congrats. I fill out a custom cover letter for each application as you should. My resume is good. It's subjective. It has been reviewed countless times by myself and others. And what do they say? Why am I getting rejection after rejection? It's right there. <laughs> because you have this mindset that you are the best. You can't operate like that. Engineers are known to be these like soulless creatures that don't understand emotions, right? But they're smart enough, emotionally intelligent enough to pick up on vibes, right? At least we have that, right? <laughs> and if this is the vibe you're giving out, then I don't know why you think anyone would want that. Being an engineer is not being a good engineer, it's being a good teammate. And if this was someone that came up to me and was like, I wanna be on your team, I would not want that. This is someone you have to work with 40 hours a week. I know you're not working closely with them during that time, but you gotta be a good teammate. And how would this transfer over to the real world, right? You would get on a team and then you would do this work that you would deem perfect, amazing, good work. I'm doing the best work. And then you wouldn't get rewarded for it. And you would blame everyone else on the team. You're like, why aren't you guys giving me what I deserve? I'm doing all the right things. I deserve these things. It's, I don't have a better word, but it's this sense of entitlement. You're like, I did all the right things. Why isn't it paying off? And I guess it goes back to that first point I made about humility, which is that you have to operate from a place of not deserving anything. Simon Sinek, he's a great speaker. I like a lot of the things he says, but he talks about this idea that you only really deserve a styrofoam cup. I forgot the exact story, but he talks about this, you know, army general that always goes to this place to give a speech and they would always give him this big mug where it's like, yes, this is a special mug for the speaker. And then one year he showed up and they just gave him a styrofoam cup. And if you have an ego, you would be like, well, where's my big mug? How come you guys have always given me a big mug? I'm big mug guy. But you have to remind yourself that at the end of the day, all you're really deserving of is a little thing to hold your water. And at those lowest level, that's a styrofoam cup. So here you are demanding a big mug, but why should you get it? Yeah, you are so great. But if you ever had real world experience, those are the people you're competing with. Oh, but I'm only competing with other students. No, you're not. You're competing with everyone else that just got laid off because the tech industry is slashing everyone. All those people in the class before you that got into the job market and then had six months of experience, guess what? They all got thrown to the wind and now they're all looking for the same jobs you are. The only difference is they're as good as you and better. They have real world experience. That's something you don't have. There are probably other things you don't have too, but I think I've been mean enough this video. So. Sorry, let me take a step back and look at this in a constructive way. What can you do? I think it's the same advice you give to anyone. 
you just got to keep trying. And don't just keep trying the same way. Like that's, you know, the classic Einstein definition of insanity. You got to keep trying, but make sure that every attempt, there's a takeaway. There's something you learn so that as you keep trying, you're getting better at trying. Because eventually you'll be so good at trying that you are successful and you will get a job. Also, yes, you have the right pieces. Everything there, you are an accomplished person. I admit, you are a very impressive person. But is that coming through? Is the way you're preparing these things, your resume, these cover letters, is it able to highlight how amazing you are? Because that's another problem in the world of engineering, right? Communication. A lot of times engineers have good ideas. It's just they don't communicate them very well. It seems like you have really good ideas, right? You have a really good resume. But are you communicating them the right way? Again, I'm pointing out that part about the resume. You said it was good. It's been reviewed countless times by myself and others. What does your review count for anything, right? And these other people, are these people with jobs? Are these people that interview other people for jobs? Are these your peers? Of course your peers are gonna say yes, they don't wanna go through that shit. <laughs> Just reading this, you seem like the person that probably threw your resume like 47 of your friends and probably 23 of them responded and were like, yeah, bro, it's good, it's fine, just send it out. <laughs> because they're trying to fight for the same jobs you're going for. They're not gonna spend the time reading your thing when they're working on their own. And I mean, the entitlement is jumping out. I just reminded myself, you said, surely leadership would be a benefit for more competitive companies like major automakers, aerospace and defense, but random ass companies? I mean, come on. <laughs> Again, this goes back to that like nice guy thing, right? Where you're like, I mean, I get why all these hot, amazing girls are rejecting me, but even the ugly ones, the ugly, dumb ones, <laughs> it's like, all right, well, get off your pedestal for a second and maybe take a look in a mirror, bud. Maybe you're not too hot either. You know, I don't know what happened to me, but for some reason this post like struck a nerve. So maybe I gave very biased input. I don't know, but who would give unbiased input, right? Let's take a look at the comments, see what they say. Who have you talked to at those companies? You should be networking, not just uploading resumes to the black hole that is online portals. Yes, that's a really good point. This is advice I've given in the past, but I'll give it here too. And that is that you need to try to get your resume to an actual person. That will guarantee that an actual person's even looking at your resume. A lot of these portals online, they just kind of go into, like this person said, a black hole and they're never seen by anyone. When you get your resume in someone's hand, I've found, and I've even talked to some of my peers, that that is the highest success rate you can have in the application process, actually getting a human being to hold your resume. Now, I'm not talking about like physically, but like if you can get it to a person online and guarantee that a person is looking at it, you're miles ahead of everyone else. Connections, connections, connections. I got interviews with Lockheed Martin, AFCS, and Navair, all from recruiting events on campus or knowing an engineer there. I got my resume pushed through to hiring managers at L3 Harris the same way. Network through LinkedIn, reach out to recruiters, and attend info sessions or career fairs. Trust me, I know how you feel, and I still feel the same way sometimes. It just feels endless. We'll get there. This, same thing, right? Connections are the even one step deeper than what I was talking about. A lot of times you get these resumes to a person just through doing a little bit of research about the company, but if you already know someone, you already have that established in, that's awesome. That's amazing. It makes getting that resume to a real person that much easier. A lot of what you've said sounds like self-validation. Many of us think we have a very strong profile and are an ideal candidate, but we got to rediscover ourselves and find the missing piece in our puzzle. Cover letters don't really matter that much unless they have a specific section for that. Maybe check up on your resume again and make sure the bullet points are succinct. Not sure if you need to tailor your resume every single time, but make different ones for different roles. Networking is always good as it can get your foot in the door faster. I'm a computer engineering sophomore and I've gotten five interviews at big corporations, two from using connections and three from cold applying. I'm not even stellar. I only have a 3.4. I'm not actively doing research. My previous internship was not even very related. I'm not DEI or a veteran. I still need to improve my interview game though, but approaching the process with humility and a desire to grow is key. It's important to show your strengths and not be a complete show off. I agree with most of what is said there. Two things came to mind when reading this. I'm not stellar, I only have a 3.4. That's good, just <laughs> shut up. And then the point about you don't need to tell your resume every time, but make sure you make different ones for different roles. That's important. Research the role that you're applying for and see what that role calls for. And then think back to all the experience, you know, the extensive club, academic, internship experience you have and think about what applies to this position, right? What skills and experiences have I picked up 
that I think would transfer over to this position. Because you're basically just trying to show the interviewer that, hey, I'm the man for the job. If you want someone that can do that, look at what I've done. Because anyone that can do that, can do that. And again, talking about connections, maybe you know someone that has that same job or a similar job. Ask them, like, hey, what does your job do? Because, right, you can read the description all you want, and that'll only give you an idea of what it is. And a lot of times those job descriptions, very general. But if you actually talk to someone that has that job, again, or a, a similar job, you can actually see what the day-to-day -day is like. And then you can find more things that fit into that mold of who that person is. Very simply put, the interview process is finding a job and then convincing someone that you are the man for the job. That sounds so simple, but if you think about it that way, I feel like it makes it a lot easier. Or maybe I just sound stupid. Maybe I sound like someone with a 3.4 GPA. Took me three years after graduation to land an engineering job, but I couldn't be happier. Yeah, sometimes these things do take a while, and this is something I've talked about in other videos, and that's that you just gotta remain hopeful. Because one day, yes, you could be in a position where you couldn't be happier. And I would not be happier if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you in the next one.